We are celebrating Pride Month. Did you know the movement for LGBTQ rights got an early start in 1950 with a secret society and the founders of the organization were former communists. Commie, oh. commie, treat it to our country! You guys hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you always know when we have brand new content so you won't miss a thing. This is Random Things You Need to Know, Pride Edition, right? It's Pride Month, so we're going to do a little pride history here to edumacate you. Uh, I'm Harry Hay. You don't know who I am? You soon will. If you guys are at BitChute watching, thank you for coming back. If you guys are at YouTube watching, thank you for coming back while we have the chance. If you guys are at Rumble or Gab or any of the other sites watching, well, thank you for coming back. You know, there was a Stonewall riot, and that's what many people think is the beginning of homosexual rights here in America. I think that that was the, the first event that ever happened, or the first group that comes after that would be GLAD or LGBTQ. As we've already studied, there have been groups that are after Stonewall, like the HRC, and of course GLAD and many other groups. But now we're gonna take a look at how long have the LGBTQ, IA plus whatever, how long have they been fighting for these rights? Let's find out. The first group that was this, that was founded was in America. This is only just America too. First group that was founded was Society for Human Rights. Oh, we have a human rights campaign I wonder if they're the same. The Society of Human Rights was an American LGBT rights organization established in Chicago in 1924. Society founder Henry Gerber was inspired to create it by the work of German doctor Mangus Hirschfeld. Now you may be saying to yourself, who is Mangus Hirschfeld, Lorenzo? You can't, you can't just leave me hanging like that. All right, I'll tell you. Magnus Hirschfeld was a German physician and sexologist he was educated in philosophy, phylogy, and medicine. An outspoken advocate for sexual minorities, Hirschfeld founded the Scientific Humanitarian Committee and the World League for Sexual Reform. He based his practice in Berlin. He is regarded as the most influential sexologist of the 21st century. Uh, he was targeted by Nazis because he was Jewish and gay. Oh, I bet you didn't think he was Jewish, did you? Yeah, he's Ashkenazi Jew and grew up at a very, very prominent household. And this guy, Mr. Henry Bert Gerber, was so influenced by Magnus Hirschfeld, he said, let me come to Chicago. I want to do the same thing here. And he started his homosexual exploits here in Chicago. Uh, he was recognized for his gay rights organization in the United States, having received a charter from the state of Illinois and produced the first American publication for homosexuals, friendship, and freedom. Two months after being chartered, the group ceased to exist. In the wake of arrest and arrest of the several society's members, despite its short existence and small size, society has been recognized as a precursor to the modern gay liberation movement. Who is Henry Gerber, you may ask? Henry Gerber is an immigrant from Germany. Came over here in 1913, settling with his family in Chicago because of its German-speaking population. Within a few years of his arrival, he experienced discrimination based on his sexual orientation and was temporarily committed into a mental institution in 1917 for being gay. Uh, inspired by Magnus Hirschfeld, he started the Human Rights Society. An African-American clergyman named John T. Graves signed on as the president of the new organi organization with Gerber. Now, why didn't Gerber become the first president? Why did this black man have to become the first president? Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, Gerber, Graves, and five others uh, were listed as directors. The state granted the charter on December 24th, 1924, making the society the oldest documented homosexual organization in the nation, despite deliberately keeping the goals of the society vague and excluding any mention of homosexuality from its mission statement, society members were still surprised that no one within the state investigated any further before issuing the charter. Maybe it's because you called yourself the Human Society for Human Rights. You didn't say you were the Society for Humans who want rights to suck dicks in the streets. That's not what you called yourself. Come on, 
now. You, you weren't you weren't surprised. Gerber formulated a three point strategy for winning that he referred to as the homosexual emancipation. Oh, now he's Abraham Lincoln. Engaged in a series of lectures pointing out the attitude of society in relation to their own behavior and especially urging against the seduction of adolescents. That's what's up. Say that one more time. And the first tenet is to engage in a series of lectures pointing out the attitude of, of society in relation to their own behavior and especially urging against the seduction of adolescents. All right, well, I like that. He's not trying to have sex with kids, so I'm okay with that. Through a publication, this is number two, through a publication, we would keep the homophile world in touch with the progress of our efforts. Number three, through self-discipline, homophiles would win the confidence and assistance of legal authorities in understanding the problem that these authorities should be educated on the futility and folly of long prison terms for those committing homosexual acts. Gerber shouldered all of the labor and financial obligations for the society. And he made sure that he funded the production of their magazine, Friendship and Freedom, something he was willing to do in the service because he believed in his cause and he wanted to be remembered as the gay Abraham Lincoln. I'm the gay Tupac. No, Jesse Smollett, not the gay Tupac. The society sought affiliation with the British Society for the Study of Sex Psychology but the British society declined, afraid of being linked with any organization that was specifically for homosexuals. Uh, Gerber was avoided prosecution for obscenity under the Comstock Act. He lost his post office job for conducting be uh, unbecoming for, I'm sorry, he lost his post office job for conduct unbecoming of a postal worker. With Gerber feeling he had hit a, a solid wall of ignorance, hypocrisy, meanness, and corruption, and unable to continue his financial support, the society dismantled. Well, you know, you can go back to Germany where they're already doing it, Gerber. You can go there and you can go hang out in Berlin with Hirschfeld and you can start as many societies as you would like. Why do you need to do this here in America? Clearly, the Americans are not on board. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Ger Gerber was left embittered and that none of his wealthier gay friends of Chicago had come to the aid of the cause and believed he was designed to advance the common good. He left Chicago for New York City, where he re-enlisted in the Army, serving for another 17 years before he was honorably discharged. Well, hey, I mean, in the process of doing that, uh, he created the homophile movement was able to come from that the homophile the homophile movement was a movement that was created in the 1950s to support homophiles and other people who are representing themselves as sexual minorities I want you to know that that is what they were calling homosexual at the time there's no LGBTQ it's just sexual minorities sexual minorities and you know that these sexual minorities feel that they are oppressed like Actual minorities. Interesting. All right, so the homophile movement, I mean, I'm sorry, the homo, yeah, the homophile movement disbanded uh, after the Stonewall riots of 1969 because the older members felt like the younger members were becoming entirely too radical. Wow, very interesting. After the gains made because of the homosexuals right movements of the 19th century and the 20th century, the vibrant homosexual subcultures of the 1920s and 30s became silent as the war engulfed Germany. And this was the home of such movements as the Scientific Humanitarian Committee and activists as Magnus Hirschfeld, Ernst Bouchard, Karl Heinrich Ulrichs, and Max Sfor. But in Nazi Germany, gay literature was burned. Gay organizations were dissolved and many gay men imprisoned in concentration camps. Hey, just want to ask you guys a quick question. You guys remember the story about Adolf Hitler where you were told that Adolf Hitler was burning uh, Jewish books? Remember you told you were told that?
It's May 1933, and all across Germany, students at universities are carrying out a series of book burnings that target people with a quote-unquote un-German spirit. At these book burnings, the works of men like Freud, Einstein, Mann, and Eric Remarque, who had written the book All Quiet on the Western Front, are thrown into the fire. The largest of these book burnings occurred in Berlin, where an estimated 40,000 people gathered to hear a speech by propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels. In this speech, he declared that Jewish intellectualism is dead and said that it was the right of the students to quote unquote clean up the debris of the past. It was this cleaning up of the past that was going to pave the way to a very dark future. Also included in these book burnings was the works of Heinrich Heine, who in 1822 said, where they burn books, they will in the end burn human beings too. Let me show you something interesting here in Berlin that people often walk right by. Beneath this glass, you'll see huge underground bookshelves, but they're empty. You see, in 1933, on this very square, a group of Nazi students burned over 20,000 books by Jewish, communist, and liberal authors in an act of literary cleansing, one of the largest and most infamous book burnings. In 1995, these empty shelves were installed by an Israeli artist. They have space for 20,000 books, the same number burned on that infamous day. And engraved here is a chillingly prophetic quote from an 1820 play by German-Jewish author Heinrich Heine. That was but a prelude where they burned books they will ultimately burn people as well. What do you think those books were? I want you to take a moment and think about that. Leave that. Leave the answer in the comment section. I'll read it. I'm very curious to know what do you guys think those books were that he was burning? Seeing as how Germany had become a Christian straight state, they were under the influence of the Pope, and you had all the majority of Jewish people were. I'm sorry, not not the majority. A large number of Jewish people in Berlin were promoting this lifestyle. What books do you think he burned? And they only tell you he burnt Jewish books. They don't tell you which kind of Jewish books. Nah, don't worry about it. Anyway, from this group, from the homophile movement and from the Society of Human Rights, there came a young man who was so influenced by Henry Gerber. His name is Harry Hay. Oh, that's me. Yes, Harry Hay. Uh, non-Jewish, by the way. Harry Hay uh, was a gay rights activist, a communist, of course, and a labor advocate. But also, the most important things about him is he's a member of NAMBLA. What is NAMBLA, you say? The North American Man-Boy Love Association was formed in 1979 as a support group for men who are sexually attracted to boys. Over the years, its membership grew from 24 to 1,500 members. During the day, Bob is a government lawyer. In the evenings, he manages the Nambla's national office. I'm mad at you. Harry Hay was born in an upper-middle-class family who was raised in Chile and California. Uh, he was born in 1912. Uh, he was influenced by Marxism. Uh, briefly studied at Stanford University, subsequently becoming a professional actor in Los Angeles, where he joined the Communist Party. Becoming a committed activist and left wing uh, in, in the left wing labor movement, as a result of the of societal pressure, he attempted to become heterosexual by marrying a woman uh, who was a part of the Communist Party in 1938, with whom he adopted two children. Uh, recognizing that he remained homosexual, his marriage ended in 1950, where he founded the Metashine Society. You could ring the doorbell and walk into a gay time warp, an incredible private gay party in the Hollywood Hills. And they were warped all right. They were having a fantastic time. It was hilarious. Society was founded in 1950. 
It was the early national gay rights organization in the United States, preceded by several covert and open organizations such as the Chicago Society for Human Rights. Communist and labor activist Harry Hay formed the group with a collector of male friends in Los Angeles. He wanted to protect and improve the rights of gay men throughout the United States. Uh, at the beginning of the gay rights protest, news on Cuba prison work camps for homosexuals inspired the Medeshine movement to organize protests and at the United Nations and at the White House in 1965. The Medeshine Society was named by Harry Hay at the suggestion of James Gruber, inspired by a French medieval and Renaissance mask group he had studied while preparing a course uh, on, the on the history of popular music for a workers' education project. The society's lifelong secret fraternities of unmarried townsmen who never performed in public unmasked were de dedicated to going out in the countryside and conducting dances and rituals during the Feast of Fools. So we took the name Mattachine because we felt that we, 1950s gays, were also masked Uh, Harry, Harry, Harry Hay uh, conceived the idea of this activist group in 1948 after signing a petition for Progressive Party presidential candidate Henry Wallace. Hay spoke with other gay men at a party about forming a gay support organization. He called them Bachelors for Wallace. Medeshine was originally organized a similar structure as the Communist Party with sales, oaths of secrecy, and five different levels of membership. Each of which required greater levels of involvement and commitment as the organization grew. Levels were expected to subdivide into new cells, creating both potential and horizontal areas for growth. The founding members constituted the so-called Fifth Order and from the outset re remained anonymous. The primary goals of the society were two. One, unify homosexuals isolated from their own kind. Two, educate homosexuals and heterosexuals toward a ethical homosexual culture paralleling the cultures of the Negro, Mexican, and the Jewish people. Three, lead the more socially conscious homosexual to provide leadership to the whole mass of social variants. And number four, assist gays who are victimized daily as a result of O. Oh, but beginning in the middle of the 1960s and especially following the Stonewall riots of 1969, they began increasingly to be seen as too traditional and not willing to go far enough to be confrontational. Like the divide that occurred with the civil rights movement in the late 1960s and 1970s brought a new generation of activists, many of whom felt that the gay rights needed to endorse a larger and more radical agenda to address other forms of oppression. Back to Harry Hay, though, for a moment. There is something that we did not touch on. We already know that Harry Hay is a communist. We already know that he comes from a middle class background, so he has quite a bit of cash and is able to do his own thing. We already know that he was married. He was married to a woman. Uh, he adopted two children. That did not work out because he's a homosexual. Did you know that he's also a person who studied Alfred Kinsey? If Alfred Kinsey were alive today, there would be a debate over who damaged more children, Jeffrey Epstein or Alfred Kinsey. A trained biologist, Kinsey achieved fame, even notoriety, in the 1940s and 50s with a pair of best-selling books about male and female sexual behavior. Controversial research he defended on scientific grounds. I discovered that there is practically nothing known about human sexual behavior in comparison with what we knew about the sexual behavior of other animals. Kinsey based his eye-opening findings on thousands of personal interviews. Many of Kinsey's findings and techniques remain controversial, including his occasional reliance on the accounts of admitted child abusers. This institute and its namesake have a history of child sex studies, much of which have been referred to as crimes against children. Alfred Kinsey is a sexologist who studied how children react to sexual activity. 
This might explain why there became a big problem with the LGBTQ movement in the 1990s and the 1980s and into the 2000s with Mr. Harry Hay. You want to know what his issue is? Well, here's part of the problem. He's a huge supporter of the North American Man-Boy Love Association. That goes against what Henry Gerber was trying to do when he started his human his Society of Human Rights. So you are not a Henry Gerber guy. You are someone different. Apparently, Harry Hayde would go to Pride events and he would make statements like the statement he made in 1983 where he was at New York University and he said this, the parents and friends of gays are truly friends of gays. They would know from their gay kids that the relationship with an older man is precisely what 13, 14, 15 year old kids need more than anything else in the world. As well as highlighting his own relationship with an older man when he was 14, saying, I send all of you my love and effect and my love and deep affection for what you offer to the boys in honor of this boy who when he was 14 and when he needed to know best of all what only another gay man could show him and tell him hey continued to protest uh nambla being banned from pride parades in 1994 protesting the stonewall 25 events exclusion of nambla on the grounds that such exclusions pandered to heterosexual dominated society despite the efforts of the vast majority of the LGBT community to distance themselves from pedophiles and pedophilia. Uh, Harry Hay died. He died in uh, 2011. He passed away. No, 2010. 2010, he died. Uh, But he thought that was the end of him. We thought that that was going to be it. That was not. On June 1st, 2011, Silver Lake Los Angeles Neighborhood City Council voted unanimously to name the Cove Avenue Stairway in Silver Lake to the Mattachine Steps in honor of Hay. In 2014, Hay was one of the inaugural honorees in the Rainbow Honor Walk, a walk of fame in San Francisco's Castro neighborhood, noting LGBTQ people uh, who have had significant contributions in their fields. And coinciding with the 50th anniversary of Stonewall in 2019, Hay was one of the inaugural 50 American pioneers, trailblazers, and heroes uh, named the National LGBTQ Wall of Honor located within the Stonewall National Monument and the first United States National Monument dedicated to LGBTQ and history. You know, in the 1950s, you had a thing called the Lavender Scare. People were concerned that homosexuals were going to go out there and try to influence the society with their homosexual ways. Many people said, no, it's not true. That's not going to happen. But you had these organizations starting as early as 1920. So somebody knew that this was out there, and that it was it was starting to spread. These guys were already starting to gain traction. They already had money. Their organizations were failing. But, you know, once you put the influence out there, it doesn't go away. It's not like it just it just dissolves. It's still there. So even right now with the whole tr- push for transgender on the kids, you think it's just going to go away if you defeat it. But it's already out there. Now people are going to want to do it because it's taboo. It's very strange. Many people were saying that the lavender scare isn't real. Gay people are not trying to have an influence on society. And they're not trying to do that. They're just trying to get rights. And it seems like they're trying to attack versus trying to be inclusive. Could this have always been the case? Even when Henry Gerber was getting started, could this have always been the case? Attack, don't be so inclusive. Maybe, maybe not. As you see, most of the older groups, they were trying to be more uh, educational. In the 1970s, you started getting more radical groups who want to become more violent and in your face and confrontational. Honestly, I really would wish that all of you people would just do what you do in your homes. Don't worry about what the rest of us think about your personal life and leave all that shit to yourself. So I don't understand why we need to be. I don't know why society needs to accept that or even know about that. It's none of our business. I don't know why society needs to know or be a part of any of one's sexual lifestyle. It's none of your business. I guess that's what I would have told Henry Gerber and Harry Hay. It's none of our business. Go live your life, brother. It's none of my concern. I don't care what you do. But apparently they cared about what they were doing. And they needed you and me and we to know. 
you guys leave some messages in the comment section tell me what do you think did you know that this goes back this this late 1924 sorry this this early 1924 this is how long we have had a homosexual movement here did you know it started in chicago i'm sure you would have thought that it started in san francisco especially with the 49ers and there being no women out there and them having to do things that were a little strange they did it for some change too sometimes they didn't even do it for change they just did it because you know they did it for the range anyway but so did, did you find that interesting did you find it interesting that this movement have been around for a long time and there's been a push to do these things for a while. This is not our first time. We are not seeing these things now. Human rights campaign has been the, the human rights. The, this, this, this is just a rebranding. They'll rebrand it again. How many times have they rebranded their organizations to try to get everybody to buy into their influential ideas? How many times have they done this? Has the money been the real issue? Once they got money and politicians on board, did that change everything? Getting money and politicians, did that make their, the movement even more stronger? Or was it the radicalization of it? You see what happened with the radicalization of it in the 70s. Now it's in your face everywhere. You can't escape it. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe those new people took saw Harry Hay and they saw Henry Gerber and they said, you guys are not tough enough. We got to get tougher on this. We got to make people accept us. We got to make people love us. We got to come out to everybody every day, all the time. We have to make everybody be a part of this. Unfortunately, they may be alienating more people being so radical not just heteros even their own homosexuals we're probably going to start a new movement like the lgb movement and it won't even involve all of you because some of you need to go and sit the fuck down all right i'll see you guys in the next one you guys leave some comments in the comment section and this is something you needed to know we're on our quest to find out how did we get here? Who are these people that put us in this bind that we are in today where we in society? We are so concerned about who's having sex with who more than we're concerned about drug addictions, homelessness, and the fact that our kids are not learning anything in school but who's having sex with who? I'll see you guys in the next one. It's something that you need to know. And the radio. Yeah, boy!